In October of 2014, Google announced its sixth smartphone carrying the Nexus brand name. It was a big departure from Nexus phones of the past. While the LG-built Nexus 4 and Nexus 5 were marketed as high-quality budget unlocked smartphones sold directly from Google, the Motorola-built Nexus 6 was billed as a large, top-tier smartphone with a premium price tag to match. How's it going everybody, this is Matt D, and this is my Better Late Than Never review of Motorola's Google Nexus 6. The first thing you'll notice about the Nexus 6 is its size. The Motorola-built tablet is often referred to as a supersized version of its sibling, the Moto X. The Nexus 6 has a nice metal side rail that gives the phone a premium, solid feel. Like the Moto X, this Motorola handset takes on the same curvature that tapers off towards the bottom of the device. If you're really into consuming media on your smartphone like me, you'll really appreciate the dual front-firing speakers on the Nexus 6. With front-facing speakers, you won't have to worry about cupping your hand around the device to redirect sound as the speakers on this behemoth of a smartphone can get quite loud. At the top of the Nexus 6, you'll find a nano SIM tray and your standard 3.5mm headphone jack. On the bottom, the Nexus 6 features a micro USB port. Starting with the exterior of the device, the Nexus 6 has a 5.96 inch display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and a pixel density of 493 ppi. The Nexus 6 sports a 13 megapixel rear camera with an aperture of f2.0 while it can shoot video in up to 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. On the front side of the phone you'll find a 2 megapixel sensor for selfies and video chats. Under the hood the Nexus 6 is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 chipset clocked at 2.7 gigahertz featuring an Adreno 420 GPU. In addition to that the phone includes 3 gigabytes of RAM as well as a 3220 mAh battery. In terms of storage options, the unit shown in this video has 32GB of built-in storage, while Motorola manufactured a 64GB variant as well. In terms of connectivity, the phone is compatible with LTE, GSM, and CDMA basement networks, so the phone is capable of running on a wide variety of mobile operators throughout the world. In addition to its versatile cellular radios, the Nexus 6 features A, B, G, N, and AC Wi-Fi, as well as NFC. In the fall of 2014, the Nexus 6 debuted as Google's reference device for Android 5.0 Lollipop. At the time of this review, my device was running stock Android 5.1.1 based on Google's material design concept. Unlike its predecessors, the Nexus 6's notification LED is not active out of the box. Instead, Motorola carried over its ambient display that it included on the Moto X flagship handset. Just pick up the phone and the Nexus 6 will display the time as well as recent notifications. At the time of this long overdue review, Google has recently unveiled the LG Nexus 5X and Huawei Nexus 6P, along Android 6.0 Marshmallow. My device has not yet received notification of a software update from Google. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the Nexus 6 has a 13 megapixel rear camera with OIS and a 2 megapixel front facing camera. The Nexus 6 seems to do well taking in light, producing good quality photos with sufficient detail. Although the rear camera is capable of shooting video in 4K resolution, I've never attempted to shoot video at such high resolution because of the massive file sizes of even short 4K video samples. Here's some video footage from the Nexus 6 shot in 1080p. As for running benchmarks on my Nexus 6, I used Antutu in Geekbench 3. On Antutu, my device received a score of 50,727. After running benchmarks on Geekbench, my unit received a single core score of 1,046 and a multi-core score of 3,183. For cellular connectivity, I tested my Nexus 6 on T-Mobile's LTE network in the northern suburbs of Atlanta. When running speed tests, I saw download speeds ranging from 10.7 to 48.6 megabits per second and upload speeds ranging from 2.2 to 6.3 megabits per second. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the Nexus 6 houses a 3220 milliamp hour battery. In the weeks I spent testing the device, I wasn't really impressed with the phone's battery life. When I first got the device, I was getting terrible screen on times of only 45 minutes to an hour until I realized that my phone was running with Voice over LTE enabled. However, after going through a few charge cycles with Voice over LTE turned off, I was able to get about a day and a half out of each charge with 2.5 to 3 hours of screen on time. Overall, making calls over voice over LTE and watching videos in up to 2K resolution really takes a toll on battery life with the Nexus 6. 
It'll be interesting to see how the upcoming Android 6.0 Marshmallow update affects battery life. Thanks to his turbocharging AC adapter, the Nexus 6 charges rather quickly. It would take just over an hour for my Nexus 6 to reach a full charge. However, the device can get to be quite warm when it's plugged in. The battery in my unit reached temperatures as high as 106 degrees Fahrenheit when I had this behemoth of a smartphone plugged into the wall. Lastly, although the Nexus 6 is capable of wireless charging, I do not have any wireless chargers available to me to test that feature. Overall, I think the Motorola Nexus 6 is a great device. Its massive 5.96 inch screen and loud front firing speakers make the phone ideal for media consumption and web browsing. However, the large size, narrow side rails, and plastic backplate may make this Google Fablet unwieldy for some. The Nexus 6's 13 megapixel rear camera seems to perform well in low light, while the camera's optical image stabilization helps to compensate for a shaky hand. In addition, if you're looking to bring your own device to your preferred wireless carrier, the Nexus 6 is one of a small minority of phones that is compatible with all four of the national wireless carriers in the U.S. Just over a year after its release at close to $700 off contract, this Motorola handset has seen several price cuts in the past several months. I've seen some online retailers selling the 32GB variant of this phone online for less than $350. Given the specifications of the Nexus 6, the phone presents a lot of value for the money. As I mentioned earlier, Google has just recently unveiled the LG Nexus 5X and Huawei Nexus 6P smartphones running Android 6.0 Marshmallow out of the box, so it remains to be seen how the Nexus 6 stacks up against those Google flagships. However, if you're looking for a quality unlocked tablet running Google's own vision of Android, the Nexus 6 is still a phone that's worth the money. That concludes my long overdue review of Motorola's Google Nexus 6, so if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button down below, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos in the future. Again, this is Matt D, and I'll see you next time.